Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, thank you for being here today. These are difficult days in the Department of Justice and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Both the Bureau and the Department have long, decades long, in the Department's case, centuries long traditions of fair and impartial administration of justice. There are thousands of good and honorable men and women that work at the Bureau, that work at the Department of Justice. And yet their integrity has been called into question by misconduct and political bias at the highest levels. On May 3, 2017, then Director Comey testified before this committee that he had, quote, never, and never was his words, been an anonymous source in any news matters related to the Trump investigation or the Clinton investigation. He further testified in response to questioning from the chairman that he had not ever authorized someone else at the FBI to be an anonymous source in news reports about the Trump investigation or the Clinton administration. He, he answered simply and categorically no. Now, in contrast to that, former Deputy Director McCabe has stated that Director Comey was aware of his leaking to the press. Moreover, his lawyer has says he has email records that demonstrated Director Comey was aware of leaking to, his leaking to the press all during the time it was happening. Both of their statements cannot be true. It is not possible, logically, for Director Comey to be telling the truth and for former Deputy Director McCabe to be telling the truth. So, Director Ray, tell us, which one is telling the truth to the best of your knowledge? Senator, unfortunately, I can't answer that question because of an ongoing matter. Is the FBI in possession of the emails referred to by Mr. McCabe of the de Deputy Director being aware of and authorizing leaks to the press? Uh, the same answer, unfortunately. Let me ask you, Mr. Gray, how seriously would the FBI treat the matter of the director of the FBI perjuring himself before the Senate Judiciary Committee? Well, Senator, as the current director of the FBI testifying before the Senate Judiciary Committee, I take the obligation to tell the truth extremely seriously, and I would expect our organization to do so as well. Well, I would hope you would take as seriously the fidelity to law of prior directors. And one or the other is not telling the truth. I don't know which one is telling the truth and which one is lying. But if there are email indicia that either demonstrate Deputy Director McCabe was telling the truth or Director Comey was telling the truth, this committee and the American people need to know. And simply saying an ongoing investigation means we'll never know who lied to this committee. That's not acceptable, I believe, either to this committee or to the American people. Well, Senator, one of the central takeaways from the Inspector General's report that's at issue today is the importance of following long-established norms in the Department, which includes commenting on pending matters in front of Congress or otherwise publicly. And so I don't believe that it would be appropriate for me, no matter how tempted I might be to answer your question, uh, to deviate from those norms in one of my first acts as director. D Director Ray, let me, let me understand which pending matter you're referring to. The Clinton email matter is closed, is that correct? Uh, yes. Well, There's no allegation that this is under the scope of the special counsel. This has nothing to do with Russia collusion or anything else. This is a question of did the, did the director of the FBI perjure himself to this committee? That's not within special counsel Mueller's jurisdiction, is it? Whether the director of the FBI, uh, I don't know what's with fully what's in the scope of special. Well, well you're, you're declining to answer a question because right. you say there's an ongoing right. investigation. And I can't. I'm trying to understand what investigation arguably covers the emails demonstrating whether or not the director of the FBI committed perjury. And I can't answer that question without describing an ongoing investigation. So it's your position you're not going to describe any investigation, but you'll decline to answer any questions because there might be some investigation that might implicate it? No, what I'm testifying to is that the questions you're asking, I know for a fact, implicate matters that I can't describe without implicating an ongoing investigation. All right, let's shift to Mr. Horowitz. 
Let's go a little bit deeper into the issue you brought up with Senator Coons about the potential of bias in the investigation. Your conclusion was that the agents involved in the conduct, quote, brought discredit to themselves, sowed doubt about the FBI's handling of the investigation, and impacted the, the reputation of the FBI. There were approximately 15 full-time agents and analysts staffed on this investigation. Is that correct? Um, I don't, as I sit here, I'm not sure the exact number. It could well have been that number. It was a lot and probably around that number. And Deputy Assistant Director Peter Strook was assigned to the investigation in August of 2015 and was placed in charge of supervising the day-to-day -day operations. My understanding is he was, in essence, the uh, leading the investigation. So the agent leading the investigation, is it true that during the period of the investigation in late 2015 and in 2016, when Mr. Strook was in charge, mm -hmm. he used an FBI device to call President Trump a, quote, effing idiot, although I don't believe he abbreviated it, a loathsome human and a disaster? Correct. Did he also say multiple times that Donald Trump, quote, cannot be president? Correct. And on August 6, 2016, when FBI counsel Lisa Page said to Strzok that, quote, maybe you're meant to stay where you are because you're meant to protect the country from that menace, meaning President Trump, mm -hmm. did Mr. Strzok reply that I can protect our country at many levels? He did. And two days later, when counsel Lisa Page asked Mr. Strzok whether Donald Trump would ever become president, did Strzok reply, quote, no, no, he's not, we'll stop it. Correct. And is it true that there are many similar statements by Mr. Strzok in the report? Uh, that's correct. And indeed, you could go on to August 15, seven days later, which was of concern to us as well, referencing an insurance policy. Now, according to the report, beyond Mr. Strzok and Lisa Page, there were at least three other FBI employees involved in the Hillary Clinton email investigation that showed animus. For example, they called President Trump an effing idiot again, and they called his supporters a slur for the intellectually disabled that I won't repeat in this committee. Is that correct? That's correct. Does any of that conduct give one confidence in fairness or impartiality in the enforcement of justice? I think it undercuts confidence precisely as we said. Now, you referred to former Congressman Anthony Weiner's seized laptop. It's correct that the FBI discovered the presence of thousands of, of emails related to the Clinton investigation on September 27th, 2016. How long... Did Deputy Director McCabe and Director Comey know about the emails that were potentially relevant to the Clinton administration and do absolutely nothing about it? So um, Director McCabe, Deputy Director McCabe was aware on September 28th, the next day, and was notified on multiple ways and multiple occasions, as well on September 29. It, there was follow-up about that by Strzok and others. And between September 29, and October 24 or 25, there was no activity by the mid-year team or FBI headquarters. And in fact, it was only reinstigated on October 21 when the New York field office went to the Southern District of New York and said, no one's doing anything about this. So nearly a month. Nearly Thank a you, month. Mr. Horowitz. And I'll just, just to clarify Please. also, if I could, it's unclear exactly what and when Director Comey knew because there is testimony from Director McCabe, Deputy Director McCabe that he briefed him on it somewhere in that late September, early October time period, but he also referred to it as a flyby briefing. And I think in an area like this, you need to be careful as I'm guessing Director Ray could testify to when you're managing 37,000 people, it's unclear whether it's fair to hold someone accountable in that position if they only got a flyby briefing. So that's why I'm 